take a second to check out my Patreon page guys, your support is really appreciated. Enjoy the tutorial. Hey guys and welcome to the 12th Windows Phone tutorial. Um, what I will be showing you in this tutorial is the accelerometer code. So we're going to open up our original Canvas app and we're now going to start to add our accelerometer. So what you're going to need on your main page is literally just a start button and a stop button. Now we need to go through to our main page and you will see the differences here. So to start with at the top we've got using Microsoft devices sensors and using Microsoft XNA framework. Um, now that we've done that we're going to have to add the accelerometer and accelerometer bit here. So this is the bit we will be using to declare and use it and this is the bit here which is actually what we're using to call from Microsoft. So in the initializing part we need to do if accelerometer is supported so if it isn't which is what the exclamation mark here means it means that if they don't have an accelerometer in their device they will get a message sent through on a message box which will tell them that they don't have one and then our two buttons that we've added will be disabled so this is just a few this is just kind of like cover us for anybody who doesn't have an accelerometer then what you would do is if it wasn't supported you'd display the buttons for the movement and if it is if it is supported using an else on the end of this we could just make our start and stop buttons appear or automatically run so all our other code is still here still um, except for this so on the main page you need to double click on start and you're going to get your little click event then inside here I know I call it accelerometer I don't know what other people call it but that's how I'm going to keep referring to it um, we need to do the accelerometer in the small a which is what we made at the start equals new accelerometer then we're going to do the accelerometer and we're going to do the time between updates. What this means is between each time that the like how often it checks the accelerometer's movement. So every half a second is what I've chosen. So after the every time every half a second it will check for changes in the accelerometer and then it will update the rest of our code. So then we've got accelerometer current value changed. Now what this does is this is an event handler with the sensor reading and it will run another little function of ours called accelerometer current value changed. Then on top of that we're going to start the accelerometer and we're going to run a try which will be um, if it has started successfully we will get a message saying it started and accelerometer.start and if it goes wrong we'll get a message box saying that it's failed to start. That's our start button. Now the code that's in here, so this might sound like a bit daunting and a bit confusing but it really isn't once you write this code out have a good look at it it's really easy to understand there's nothing complicated here so the accelerometer current value change that we added for the um, every time the value is changed that's what's going to get run which is this piece of code here and this does an, a dispatcher um, a user dispatcher to do the update UI and it passes the e dot sensor reading which is from our sensor reading event argument and it's going to get the accelerometer meter uh, accelerometer reading sorry so whatever has been this value here is what will then be used in this bit here so where we've got the update ui and it says accelerometer reading accelerometer reading that is the e dot sensor reading that we passed so now wherever we're in this function everywhere we see the accelerometer reading is using that e dot sensor so what we need to do in the user interface is we need a new vector which is vector 3 and we're going to be doing vector 3 acceleration equals the accelerometer reading that we passed dot acceleration so we're going to get the acceleration of that reading that we've been sent through now with Z, Z is when you put the phone when you're in an upright position and the phone leans backwards that does a minus on the Z when the phone leans forward that puts a positive on the Z then the X is when you turn, tilt the phone to the left and when you tilt it to the right. So tilting to the left is minus, tilting to the right is positive, a bit like the canvas moving. So when you move to the right is plus, back is left. So inside there all we've done is if the um, Z is less than point, point zero 0.05 then we set the top of the player to minus 10 and we take it, we make it move up the screen all the time that the phone is tilted backwards. But then we've got an else if, so if it isn't isn't negative, then we check if it's more than 0 0.05, in which case it will then move the player down the screen, and that's when the phone is tilted towards the user. If it's not, if it's in between those two values, then it won't go anywhere, which is what we want. So if you've got the phone upright, then it won't move, in case you want to just go left or just go right. So then on the X, the same thing. If the phone gets tilted to the left, it will move left, 
and if you tilt the phone to the right, which is the positive, it will move right. And again, if you keep it upright, it won't move at all. Now, we've got the stop button. So inside the stop button, we have the accelerometer. So we're saying if it isn't null, so if not, if it's not equal to null, so if there's actually an accelerometer in existence, then we use accelerometer.stop. And then we do message show accelerometer stop. Now, the reason we do that is because if the accelerometer wasn't started and we press this button, it would probably cause trouble. It would probably throw an error. So we use the not null um, to check that there is something there to actually stop. So that's the code for now. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll run the uh, emulator. <coughs> so once you run the emulator, you need to click on the little arrows on the right to bring up the additional tools and go to the accelerometer. Once you're on here, select portrait standing and hit reset. This will make sure that the phone isn't already off at an angle. What you need to do is go over to your application and well, before that is we'll have a look at this. When you hold down the orange dot on the phone, you can see here you've got the X, Y and Z. So if you want to work out for yourself what you're doing, you literally just move the dot and then the dot will move the phone however you are wanting it to be moved. So if you put it back in its upright position, you'll see that it's 0, minus 1, 0. Now in order for the Y to become um, a 0, it would have to be flat on the surface. So if you do um, portrait flat, then you'll see that the Z is then minus 1. So we'll just keep it portrait standing. Um, when you tilt it to the left, you will be able to see that the X is starting to go up the minus or starting to go down. So it's going, the further we go left, it goes minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. And when we go back the other way, it goes plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4. And then the same for the Z, when we lean the phone backwards, we've got Z is 0.0, .0 at the moment. It'll go 0 0.1, 0 0.2. And then we go the other way, we get back to the positives. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So we're not worried about the Y for now. Um, we're just going to literally work with X and Z. So what we do now is we press start on our accelerometer app and it tells us it started. So we know already that when we've pressed the start button, this bit of code has been executed and if there had been a problem, we'd have got the error message. So as it stands, our accelerometer is now doing its job. So now as the phone gets tilted down, you can see that our turtle starts to move down the page. Now, as you can see here, my X is at 0.04. If I go a little bit more, it will be above that 0 .5, 0 0.05 we were talking about and our turtle starts to move to the left. Now the reason he's going down and left is because the phone was, um, it was leant forward and to the left at the same time. So if we lean it just backwards, you'll see it goes just up. But if we lean it to the right a little bit, it starts to go up and right at the same time because the accelerometer Z is beyond 0 0.05 and the X is past 0 0.05. So then we go the other way. And if we stand the phone up right, we can make him go just left. So if we do this, you can see our tail is now going just left because the phone is tilted. And if we go to the other side of the scale, it would go just right. And you can just play around with this, kind of get your head around how the turtle's movement is. Now, if you wanted to speed this up, make it a little quicker, I'm going to change the 500 to 100. So every 0.1 of a second, it will do the updates on the phone. So we click start and we go ahead and we move our turtle. So now you can see it's becoming a little more fluid. And if you're feeling, you know, a bit daring, then change it to 50. So every 0 0.05 of a second, um, your app is going to, oh, I started in the wrong place, so it zoomed off. We'll just restart that. Make sure you always start the phone in portrait standing and hit the reset button, otherwise your turtle will just disappear. So then just carefully move it down, and there you go. He's now moving on his way. So this makes it a little more fluent. You can kind of work better with it. You can, he's gone slightly off the canvas, but we haven't put any boundaries in. So the simple way to do boundaries is to work out how big your, what you're going to need is you're going to need a little if statement, which you're going to put in on the X. So the X is the left to the right. And we know that if the X is on this minus scale, then we're going to be moving the player left. And what we would do is we'll put a little if statement in here, which will say, if the canvas and we're getting the left of it, if the player is more than zero, then we'll let them move back. But if they aren't more than zero, then we will stop their movement. Now what this should do is when we reset our app, this means that when we press start and we head left, our turtle should stop at the edge of the canvas, which he has. So we now know that our turtle will not move any further to the left if it's a zero. It doesn't matter where he is, where he is on the app, he will not go any further than the left of the uh, boundary. 
so that you do the rest of it the same you do the top and you do the bottom and you have to do the right as well so you have to get the best way to do the right hand side will be you click on your um, canvas and you can see that our canvas is 460 wide but remember whenever you're taking a top or left position of an image it's always coming from that top, le top left corner so if you're trying to stop it going off the side of the page and you set it to 460 your turtle will go basically like this it will go all the way like that before it stops so what you need to do is you need to add the size of the square on as well which is 100 so you want to make it 360 so I'll quickly do that and show you how that works So we want to do if it's less than 360 and run that. Reset our accelerometer, run the code and when we head right it stops and hits its head and then it goes back again and it stops at the wall. So if we had set it to 460 which the canvas is it wouldn't have stopped but because we accounted for the fact that our image is 100 big um, our effectively our stopping point is somewhere here but it makes it look like our stopping point is over here so that's just a rough idea you can do the top and bottoms yourself if you have any troubles drop a comment drop me a message um, you know how it is just subscribe check out my patreon page guys if you like my videos then contribute um, and I guess I'll see you in the next video